Hello everyone, and welcome back to MD Sim 360. I'm excited to share something really fascinating with you today. Analyzing partial unfolding of a protein during a molecular dynamics, MD simulation. Now, for those of you who are familiar with MD simulation analysis, you might think that when you look at the radius of gyration plot and see a stable curve, everything's fine, right? But today, I'm going to show you why that's not always the case. Even though the radius of gyration suggests stability, there's actually a subtle unfolding process happening inside the protein. I'll walk you through how to identify these changes and why the radius of gyration alone might not give us the full picture. We're using the MDSIM360 platform for this simulation. It's a super easy to use platform that allows us to visualize live trajectory data and real-time graphs as the simulation runs. The cool part? It's all powered by Gromax on the back end, making it super efficient. Now, let's dive into the details. The protein in this case is relatively small, with around 13,000 atoms in total, including the solvent and ions. I'll start by showing you the trajectory video of the protein. Pay close attention to any changes that might happen during the simulation. Notice anything? Don't worry if you didn't catch it immediately. We're going to break down the data step by step and correlate it with what's happening inside the protein. First, let's take a look at the radius of gyration plot. The radius of gyration typically helps us understand how compact or expanded a protein is during the simulation. As you can see, the curve here looks pretty stable, right? There are no drastic changes. But don't be fooled. This doesn't mean the protein isn't undergoing significant conformational changes. Sometimes, subtle changes don't immediately show up in the radius of gyration plot, but they're still happening. So, what else can we look at to dig deeper into the protein's behavior? Let's check out the RMSF graph, root mean square fluctuation plot. RMSF measures how much each residue fluctuates throughout the simulation, and it can give us great insight into the dynamics of the protein. As you can see, the terminal residues, the ends of the protein chain, are highly fluctuating, which is pretty normal. But here's where it gets interesting. We also see that some of the intermediate residues are fluctuating quite a bit. This is unusual because typically, the middle residues are more stable. This indicates that something exciting is going on inside the protein. Now, let's move on to intrahydrogen bond analysis. Hydrogen bonds are key to maintaining the protein structure, especially the secondary structure, like alpha helices. In this graph, we're tracking how many hydrogen bonds form within the protein itself. In the beginning, there are about 14 to 18 hydrogen bonds, but towards the end of the simulation, this number drops to around 1012. A decrease in hydrogen bonds usually suggests that the protein is loosening up or undergoing some form of unfolding. This is a classic sign that the protein might be destabilizing or partially unfolding. Next, we'll dive into protein solvent hydrogen bond analysis. This tracks the bonds between the protein and the surrounding solvent molecules like water and ions. This analysis helps us understand how exposed or buried the protein's hydrophilic, water-loving regions are. At the start of the simulation, we see fewer hydrogen bonds between the protein and the solvent. But as the simulation progresses, there's a gradual increase in these bonds. What does this tell us? It means that the hydrophilic regions, which were once buried inside the protein, are starting to be exposed to the solvent, indicating that the protein is unfolding or loosening up. Let's now look at the Leonard-Jones short-range interaction analysis. This analysis examines van der Waals interactions between atoms in the protein and nearby molecules. These interactions are crucial for maintaining the hydrophobic core of the protein. 
The graph shows a slight decrease in these interactions over time. A drop in Leonard-Jones interactions often suggests that the protein's compact structure is breaking down, which again points to unfolding or a loss of stability in the protein's core. Finally, we have the Solvent Accessible Surface Area, SASA analysis. SASA tells us how much of the protein surface is exposed to the solvent. If the protein is stable and folded tightly, we'd expect a smaller SASA. However, as the protein begins to unfold, more of its surface area becomes accessible to the solvent. In this simulation, we see a small increase in SASA, suggesting that the protein is starting to unfold and exposing more of its surface to the surrounding solvent molecules. Now that we've broken down the individual trends, let's put everything together. From the RMSF fluctuations to the decrease in intrahydrogen bonds, the increase in protein solvent hydrogen bonds, the decrease in Leonard Jones interactions, and the rise in SASA, it's clear that the protein is undergoing partial unfolding. So let's check out the trajectory again and correlate the data with what we see in the actual protein structure. At the start of the simulation, the protein has a stable helix structure. But as we move through the simulation, something interesting happens. The helix starts to unravel. Let's compare the initial and final frames of the protein. In the initial frame, the helix is intact. By the final frame, the helix is completely gone. This structural change matches up perfectly with the trends we observed in the graphs, especially the RMSF fluctuations and the decrease in hydrogen bonds. When the helix unravels, the RMSF values spike because those residues are now moving and fluctuating much more. This also correlates with a decrease in intrahydrogen bonds and the Leonard-Jones interactions, which tell us that the protein is losing its compact structure. In conclusion, while the radius of gyration didn't show dramatic changes, all of the other analyses clearly indicate that the protein has undergone partial unfolding during the simulation. Even small proteins like this can show unfolding behaviors, especially in simulations where the environment, like solvent or temperature, might favor structural changes. MD-SIM360 makes it easy to track all these changes in real time and correlate them with visual trajectory data which is incredibly powerful for understanding protein dynamics. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this breakdown helped you understand how to use these analyses effectively. Stay tuned for more videos where we'll dive even deeper into molecular dynamics and how to make the most of MD-SIM 360